All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. And we are going to now uh, share uh, or hear from our fabulous speaker tonight. Uh, her name is Maria Quintana Pilling. She is a functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner, and she's going to present her talk tonight, Family Chef Fatigue, Seven Ways to Cure Kitchen Burnout. Now, it's been a long 18 months since the first shelter-in-place mandate, and along with that, the joy and convenience of eating out, lunch, dinner, gatherings, all of those things gone, right? Now, some of us may feel like we have become slaves to our family, our kitchen, and our cravings. It's time to shift our cooking and eating mindset from chore to purpose. In this informative talk, functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner Maria Quintana Pilling will share ideas on help you on how to help you cure kitchen burnout so that we not only find joy in the kitchen but also learn how to take our health and productivity to a whole new level. Just a little bit about Maria. She is a functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner, as I did mention. Uh, she's a cert certified nutrition consultant, a natural chef, and founder of urbanspicenutrition.com. Maria is committed to helping women who want to improve their gut health and hormone balance with real food. Please take it away, Maria. Thank you, Andrea. Hello, everyone. Can you believe that it's been over a year and a half since the first shelter in place mandate came out? And we are facing winter. <laughs> and so COVID is um, going to be with us a little bit longer. So our routines are a little bit out of whack and they're going to stay like that for longer. And so our your family chef. Um, role will continue to be a prominent um, role for you. So I'm not sure about you guys, but when the first shelter in place mandate came out, I had these big plans that I was going to take this extra time, this extra time I had now <laughs> to make homemade sourdough bread um, and try all these cool new recipes. Um, and now I'm, I haven't ever tried to make sourdough bread. It's still on my to-do list. Um, and sometimes I am stuck trying to think of what to make. So can I get a show of hands of anyone dealing with that? Yeah. So who wants some creative, sneaky ways to put something healthy together um, in a quick amount of time? All right, well. I'm going to share with you some ideas and I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. Can everyone see that? Okay. Okay. So family chef fatigue, seven ways to cure kitchen burnout. So the first thing to remember is that mindset is everything. I think a lot of us think of cooking as a chore and something we have to do because we have to eat. Um, so why don't we shift our mindset and instead of thinking of cooking or eating as a chore, think of cooking and eating as a purpose. So we eat so we don't feel hungry but food does so much more than just take our hunger away. Food is our energy source. It fuels us. It makes us feel good. It helps us be productive. It lets our body work in harmony. Um, it heals us from acute and chronic conditions because it's supplying us with the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients our bodies need to heal. Have you experienced the difference between eating with a purpose and eating to just eat? I can tell you that it makes a difference. You can ask the hundred plus women who have taken my five day food reset um, detox, some of which are sitting here with us today. Uh, these women feel more energy, they have more clarity, they're more productive um, because they're eating with a purpose. 
um, you know, things like sinuses clear up, uh, headaches go away, bowel movements improve, and they feel better. So what's your health story right now? And what can be your purpose for eating? Um, is it to feel good in your body? Is it to improve your immunity? We could all work on this right now in, in the face of COVID and the Delta variant. Do you have a chronic condition or a diagnosis like Hashimoto's, diabetes, or, or heart disease? Use any of these as motivation to learn about the healing properties of food and include these foods in your daily diet. Educate yourself, um, work with a naturopath, nutritionist, or health coach, and use your food purposely so that you can feel the results. So that you're not just eating because you're hungry, but instead you're eating for a purpose. Because what happens when we don't? We think food doesn't matter, and we grab what is easy and convenient. So this brings us to point number two, stock your kitchen and pantry. We need to stock our kitchen with convenient and easy, healthy foods. Not only that, but we also need the tools needed to make healthy meals for ourselves. Kitchen basics include things like a chef's knife, a uh, knife sharpening tool, which is really important because a dull knife is dangerous and unproductive. We need um, a large skillet, a small saucepan, a Dutch oven or soup pot, a chopping board, a baking tray, mixing bowls, and a muffin pan. Those are all great things to have and you get by perfectly. Pantry must-haves include things like all-purpose all flour, um, nut or seed butters, olive oil or coconut oil for cooking, a couple types of um, vinegars. I like apple cider vinegar because of its healing properties and rice vinegar because I like to make Asian dishes. Whole grains are great to have, um, rice, oats, quinoa, things like that. Natural sweeteners like maple syrup, honey, or coconut sugar. And canned or jarred foods like beans, salmon, tomatoes, olives, artichoke hearts. On your counter, you wanna have fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, avocados, berries, and bananas, all those are great to make smoothies. Um, carrots, celery, onions, and garlic are at the base of most dishes. And dark leafy greens and salad greens are a great addition to any meal and they're super easy uh, to add. I like kale, baby kale and baby arugula because um, they keep well in the fridge and they don't require any chopping. And then um, I like romaine butter lettuce or Boston red lettuce because they, it keeps a little bit longer than baby spring, a baby spring mix does. I've listed some healthy snack ideas here. If you wanna grab your phone and take a quick snap picture of this. Um, uh, the, the magic formula here is to remember that you always want to include fat, fiber, and protein to maintain balance, uh, a balanced blood sugar so that you stay full longer. Okay, number three is to plan your week. This is so key. Uh, let me ask, would you launch a new product or service, write a book or, or a blog post without a plan and expect it to be easy? No, you wouldn't. And so you shouldn't expect a, your um, home chef gig to be easy without planning your week of meals. This is the most time-saving, money-saving, stress-relieving thing you can do. And it only takes 20 minutes to plan a week of meals. This can save you hundreds of dollars and 15 to 20 minutes a day of wasted time and added stress. If you plan, you can just look at your plan and start cooking instead of standing there, staring at inside your fridge, wondering what you're going to make that night. And chances are you're not going to make anything. Have you ever been so hungry that you just ripped into a bag of chips and within minutes, the entire bag is gone and then you're full, but later you have the munchies because you haven't satisfied your body's nutritional needs. This here is a sample meal planner that I use with my clients. Um, and it's important to know what's going on during the day 
um, around your meals. So here I've listed, this is my week, um, this week, what I have going around around meal times and how I've adjusted my dinner plan. So today, for example, it was a really busy day and, and we just had leftovers. So now how do you reduce the overwhelm of figuring out what to put in your meal plan? So this brings us to number four, is to focus on veggies. I like to focus meal planning around vegetables so I can always get a good variety in. I do this especially when I'm eating out or ordering out. It helps narrow down the choices because there's so much uh, choice available now. Having a list of seasonal fruit and vegetables also is really helpful in narrowing down um, what you can eat. Um, and then it's uh, easy to quickly Google recipes with these uh, vegetables. For proteins, you can always add a rotisserie, get a rotisserie chicken or um, smoked salmon or, or canned salmon as your protein. So it doesn't have to be difficult. The fifth way is to um, have a list of your favorites. Um, so the favorite meals you like to make, your favorite cookbooks, and your favorite go-to websites for recipes. I've listed my favorites here. And it's always fun to invest in a new cookbook or try a new recipe to keep things interesting. Um, I like to commit to trying one new recipe a week or one new vegetable. I know what you're thinking now, but Maria, this is still a lot of work for me. So um, the sixth way is to involve your friends and family. Um, Believe it or not, you're doing them a favor. Preparing food is better for their digestion. Touching and smelling food for a period of time helps your brain signal to your stomach that you're gonna eat and your stomach starts to produce the gastric, gastric juices necessary for digestion. Involving your family also helps them appreciate you more as they understand the work involved and the satisfaction of hearing compliments and gratitude. Um, and what about friends and social distancing? And this is um, great for those who are single or live alone. Um, you can have Zoom or um, phone or Zoom prep parties with one or two friends and catch up uh, while cutting vegetables. All you need is a Bluetooth headset and your phone. And you can also take turns with friends preparing meals and delivering the meal to your friend and vice versa. This is super fun and convenient um, and it reduces your cooking time and doubles the amount of home cooked meals that you get. I've had detoxers do this with friends with much success. And my final advice is um, to keep it simple. I don't know about you, but when I first started cooking, I took pride in making the most difficult dish with the most and hardest to find ingredients. Now I keep it simple. I make a protein and limit, limit my vegetables to one or two. Here, here are a couple examples on how to keep it simple. Um, one pan or one sheet meals are wonderful. Um, I love using a baking tray, lining it with parchment, throwing um, veggie, a veggie like broccoli, tomatoes or sweet potatoes, adding olive oil, salt, salt and pepper, and maybe a spice or two, and just mixing it up and then putting chicken or fish on top. And then I just stick it in the oven for 30 or 40 minutes at 400 and dinner is done. At the end, I can pull the parchment off and there's very minimal cleaning needed. Slow cookers and Instapots are great because you can make large batches and freeze um, a dinner for later. And then stir fries are quick and easy. Here's a one, uh, one meal, one skillet meal with four ingredients. This salmon with shredded cabbage is delicious and super simple. Um, and you can also make a canned food spread. Um, like uh, you can have dolmas, hummus or chickpeas olives, and a bed of mixed greens or arugula with olive oil and apple cider vinegar. 
And lastly, Buddha bowls are wonderful um, because uh, again, these are things you can pull out of your pantry or your um, fridge or counter and just chop up a couple of vegetables and throw it together. As long as you have um, a grain, you don't really need a grain, but um, a grain is helpful sometimes to have as the base of your Buddha bowl. So if you want more ideas like this, I am teaching a virtual cooking class um, with Three Trees Wellness um, on Tuesdays um, from six to nine. The offerings vary every week. So there's a different offering for the first week, second week and third week um, and fourth week of the month. And then I'm also offering my Set Up Your Thriving Kitchen um, private program for 20% off. It's a three hour one-on-one -on -one session where we clean up your kitchen and pantry. So email me if you're interested in that. So uh, tell me or share with us what's your favorite go-to meal. I know we've already talked about it, but if you'd share it in the chat, we can all benefit from it. So are there any questions? Uh, go ahead, and Jen. Hi, I'm just, I loved it. Thank you so much. That was super informative. And I'm just wondering, is there a way to get what you just shared? Like, can we get that emailed to us? Or I don't know how to access what you just shared. Um, sure, I can, um, I can email it. Yeah. And, and also this talk will be archived on the website. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I just find as a single person, like, and that's what I was going to share right here, like I tend to do, which I shared in the breakout group, which is like, I tend to do like salad with everything. And I do it literally every night for five months. I mean, like, because I just don't think like your creativity, and I'm like, Oh, that's such a good idea. Like, there's just the vegetables with the parchment paper and this fish on top. And I just forget and I need to like have a reminder in front of me and the planning thing so thank you so much it was just so helpful and I know it seems so simple but it's so helpful and I always want to add more variety because I know my body is like okay again 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 or I'll make like the same soup and freeze five of them and then I you know what I mean yeah well the the idea to when you're single to um share the food with a friend and and that I think is a really good idea of some detoxers are doing that right now and loving it and they're not single they have families but that way they get to focus on themselves and not everyone else in the family yeah and just to be more creative because I forget and then I think like I just don't know I don't know what to do you know I'm not sure I know what to do but I think with your ideas, it feels so simple. Like I could do that. I can do it. So I just want to grab the info if it's possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Pam and then Claire. I really loved your um, chore to purpose. It reminded me of doing that. And I know that when I did a few detoxes a few years ago, like just that shift of cleaning out the kitchen and, um, changing everything back to how I used to eat and the ruts that I had gotten into um, and altering that made a huge difference. And then somehow some, and maybe the last three months, I just sort of like tanked on all that, not in terms of how I'm eating, but it got incredibly boring rather than inspiring. So I really loved your ideas and the idea I got from Andrea in our breakout. And so just adding anything new seems exciting again. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I loved your talk. Thanks. Thank so, you. I, I agree that I noticed my food has got a lot more, my cooking has got a lot more kissable over the years, but I'm wondering, I know it's cause I've got a lot, I, I've got, I've got less time and I'm less interested in food than I used to be, but also don't you think it's a reflection on the way that food is a lot cleaner over the last few few years um yeah it certainly could be but for sure for me it was 
I, I just thought that's what cooking was. Like it had to be complicated. Yeah, I agree. Cause I just pulled these out here, these three files here. And this is how I keep my, my recipes. Like uh -huh. one is desserts, main courses, I call it, you would call it entrees. And this one's starters and vegetables. And like, I've hardly, I've had these for 30 years. <laughs> like I noticed like in the last 10 years, I have like one of these for each recipe. Uh -huh. I pull these out so then they can keep clearing that and wipe them out like I've hardly ed added to them for the last 10 years you know <laughs> yeah and when you look at them they're definitely dated yeah yeah dated yeah. but you Green. know now that I'm now that I'm thinking yeah. about it I think you're right I think the whole um clean food movement has made like really simplistic eating more um yeah. trendy Looking, I mean, looking at this, this is green goddess dip, and this is from William Sonoma. Okay, so this is saying, uh, so it's got all, all, so it's starting off good. It's got all the, it's got all, it's got all the, the um, herbs and what have you in, and then it's, there we go. Then we, then we, then it goes, starts to go wrong. Quarter of a cup of mayo, quarter of a cup of sour cream. So Sounds that would delicious. be rest now, wouldn't it? It'd be, it would be yogurt, etc., to update it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, yeah. I think that um, fats have really gotten a bad yeah. uh, rap forever yeah, <laughs> since the beginning of time. And, um, you know, as long as those are quality, mm. uh, what was it? My, was mayo, it? Mayonnaise and... Mayo, mayo and sour cream. Yeah, I mean, I think if they're yeah. organic and high quality, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. Christine. Go ahead. This is more of a share. Um, I feel really lucky. I loved what you shared because it's the way I cook. And my mother passed away this May at 95. And this is what my mother did. And so from the time I got out of college, when I would cook for myself, I'd go to the store and I'd buy a piece of fish and I'd get some vegetables or I'd buy a pork chop or I'd buy a steak or whatever it was that I was cooking, I'd have some kind of protein. I'd get a chicken breast and I'd get some mixed spices that I could put on it and I'd grill it and I would pan grill it or I'd bake it in the oven mm -hmm. and then I'd cook my vegetables. And everyone always said, how do you stay so thin? You eat, you eat a normal amount. And I was like, yeah, cause I'm eating like healthy food. <laughs> I'm eating normal things and I'm not snacking and I'm not you know, um, filling up on things that I don't need to be eating. And I think that as I've gotten older, it's gotten a little bit harder. And I find myself doing what my mom always did, which is I always have a little bit of cheese and crackers before dinner, which I shouldn't do. <laughs> I do a little bit of it. I try and not, but it's sort of my treat. And, um, you know, I buy good quality cheese. I don't get crappy stuff and I eat all organic for the most part. And I have for a long, long time. And I would encourage those of you that do have to cook for yourself that it's so easy when you're at the store to buy, if you really want a yummy pork chop, get a pork chop, get a good grill pan. You can sprinkle some spices, Penzi's, which is an online spice store, which comes from Milwaukee, which is where I hail from, has great mixed spices. It's a great way to easily do things. Somebody had posted about the Trader Joe's tikka masala. I mean, these are such great ways to create meals quickly and you can cook those for yourself. And if you're like a, my thing that I posted was lamb burgers. If you get half a pound of lamb or three quarters of make an extra, I make it with this amazing yogurt and avocado um, dip that, you know, or sauce that goes on top that my kids call these hem heaven burgers. Mm -hmm. um, it's got mint, garlic, and uh, avocado and yogurt. Mm -hmm. And I could eat this stuff with a spoon. And so I have a little extra leftover and I would have a, a burger later and everybody in the family is fighting over the leftovers. So easy, easy things. And don't get into your head. Um, you know, Maria shares such good, good tips. This is not difficult to do. And once you get in the habit and you've done it for a month or so, it's going to be practice. Susanna, go ahead. Maria, I'm curious. What do you think of Salad Master? S Salad Master is um, the cookware. The cookware with you don't use oil. 
Is yeah, that it? yeah. I I don't do you think know it's why. kind of like a fad, or do you think it's nutritionally sound, or do you have an opinion? I don't. I don't believe in it. I I, I don't think it's there's a purpose for it. I think we, we need fats in our diet and it's, um, one way to get it in. You have to make sure you're using quality fats, not cooking them t- too high at high heat, but, um, fat is definitely a vital, um, macronutrient that people, um, you know, like I said, it gets a bad rap. Yeah, and with salad, I have Salad Master, and it's um, it's titanium and surgical steel cookware. You don't yeah. have to use fats, but I do. I use olive oil. I use, you know, um, and what's great about it is you it, you don't cook them at such a high heat because it retains the heat really well. So it's actually, I think it's really excellent cookware. Um, things don't burn as much and that sort of thing. So Linda, I see you and doing I use finger. Yeah. And I would like to add that the cooking surface is a real that's the key with salad master besides the low temperature is that the titanium coated is non-toxic as opposed to teflon which is poisonous and yep. aluminum et cetera, et cetera. so they're they're high quality um cooking utensils that really do contribute to health it, it's not about being fat free yeah exactly i, I am 100 percent. yeah i saw somebody else raising their hand uh that was that was me i was just oh, chiming in oh chiming in on that oh, same solid. same thing was, yeah 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 but um you know to be honest this is maria's share is is uh, about you know yeah. curing kitchen burnout and in, in different ways i mean you thank know, you so, maria yeah. that was so yeah. helpful yeah. i look forward awesome. to seeing it again so i can do some of those wonderful things you suggested mm-hmm. thank you so much you're welcome yeah, that was lovely. Is there any other questions? Uh, Lori, uh, just unmute yourself, honey. Oh, there I went. Sorry. I just had a quick question. You had um, put rotisserie chicken on some uh, one of the menus there. Is that something that you make yourself or do you have suggestions of where to get a healthy rotisserie chicken? Oh, yes. Um, I'm glad you asked that. I, I get my rotisserie chicken from either the Good Earth or Whole Foods. And um, you do need to uh, read the ingredients of the rotisserie chicken because I know there's um, there's a little market here in Fairfax that has rotisserie chicken. And when we first moved here, I just got it. And then I read, then I read the ingredients and it would have like you know, yellow number, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, why, why is that necessary on a rotisserie chicken? So yeah, um, I'd be just Perfect. careful. You, all you need is salt and pepper <laughs> for a chicken. Yeah. Thank you. Cause I could eat a chicken for several days. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. A easy, super easy way to um, get your protein in and then you can just make a salad or, you know, roast some vegetables. Thank you. My teenager actually um, did something. She she was doing, um, I guess, a course at uh, high school. This was during the pandemic. And I guess she stumbled upon this recipe for red onions that you would, um, you basically turn them into pickled onions. And I was so, if you guys tried that, it was so good. Um, and so she, she created, it was with apple cider vinegar mm-hmm. and, you know, just thinly sliced the red onions. So the, the thing is you want to pour boiling water over the onions. I guess it softens the onions before you put them into the apple cider vinegar. And there's some spice, there's recipes online, but I have kept it going. She's off at college now and I have kept that going mm. and I will have those pickled onions on my egg sandwich. If I do an egg sandwich with gluten-free bread and tons of avocado on it and a fried egg and these pickled red onions will go, will go into the mix there as well. That's awesome. I love pickled red onions as well. And I do them, but I just put apple cider vinegar in them and like 30 minutes or 20 minutes while I'm making a meal. Um, usually tacos is what I make it with and it goes nicely on tacos. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we are good. Maria, uh, thank you so much. Thank this you. was amazing. Thank you, Maria. Great. Great. Thank you.